All right, guys. Get into our next panel, artistpreneurship. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm about to go sit in the audience myself. We have Jason Reddick here from ASCAP. Let's make some noise, guys. And he brought some amazing friends with him. I'm gonna let you uh, kick it off, Jason. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Good day, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Cool, so I guess we will start. Quick intros, Drew said we don't have much time, so we're not gonna get into the fluff. Just say your name and what you do, and we're gonna keep moving. Start here. Hey, what's going on? Um, I'm Piff Marty. We're in real life, so you can call me Shaquille. Um, I'm an artist slash content creator slash anything that helps me make money. Oh, you got a mic? No. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley. I'm a marketing director at APG, which is an indie label, and I work on hip hop and R&B. Jamie Dominguez, and I'm a sure. regional director of uh, business development, and I had to think about it, business development and artist relations at Sound Royalties. What's up, everyone? Oh, shit. What's up, everyone? Uh, Manny Toro, <laughs> <laughs> uh, global head of marketing for SoundCloud. Dope. All right, so we're gonna get right into it, and this is for the panel in general. Um, is this a good time to be an artist? We hear about, you know, recession, it's a lot going on, it's oversaturated, things like that. So is this a good time to be an artist? We'll start with you, artist. <laughs> you know, it's subjective, right? Um, one of the words that you used was saturated. So while it is very easy and very simple to, to distribute your music, distribute anything that has to do with your art, it's also becoming a lot more difficult for the masses to see it because there's so many people do it, doing it, right? So I do say, overall, my answer is that it is a great time to be an artist, but artists have to do a lot more work than they used to have to do. And I'm, I'm glad you said that, because we can go to marketing. How does that work? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to have to agree. It is a great time to be an artist, because there's so many creative platforms that you can put out your music and your content. But you definitely have to be a lot more savvy now. A lot more savvy, a lot more creative. You have to find like your niche, your pocket, to where you can really master and excel, and then be able to expand from that. And you mentioned platforms, let's go to Manny. Is this a good time? <laughs> no, it's a great time. I think um, it's also an exciting time. You know, if you look at it globally, we look at all the artists that are uploading music to all the different platforms. Um, you know, it's exciting. Yes, you definitely do have to have to do a lot more work than you kind of previously had to given all the channels. Um, but one thing I think, you know, at least in our world, that's been great is also um, artists in specific countries, in specific regions, and like them focusing on winning home and then, you know, kind of grow in their, their audiences from there. So um, yeah, it's, been, it's a good time. And Jamie? I think it's the best time to be an artist. There's, you know, I, I, Everybody. I think we've all been in the industry for a long time. I've been in the industry for 25 years and I've seen it from when, you know, people were fighting uh, Napster, you know, and they thought the industry was dead to now I'm totally aging myself, but I'm just here to lay it out there because I've seen the evolution and now is, really the most exciting time and it's inspiring to see all of you here at on a saturday morning you know trying to acquire the knowledge because that is what is going to make your career a career you know it's gonna you, the more you know the more you learn there's so much to learn out there because this industry is convoluted it's not transparent um and in order for you to really be on top of your game and to know your business, you gotta, you gotta educate yourself, it's the only way. And can I interject real quick? Yeah, um, when I was saying, when I was describing how difficult it is now to, to elaborate a little further, you have to wear more hats than just being an artist. You have to be as a CEO, you have to be the COO, you have to be the director of marketing, you have to be all, the, you have to be the manager as well too. Looking at yourself as a business owner as opposed to just an artist is very imperative to your growth um, in 2022, and I just think in general, it was the same, it, I think it was imperative to your growth in the 90s as well, just a lot of artists didn't know that they had the opportunity to do that, but now it's, it's essential for you to, 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 to make it, so, so, um, so to speak. Dope. How many artists do we have out here? Yeah, I knew, I knew there was going to oh. be a lot of hands raised. Everybody, okay. <laughs> How many executives? Execs, managers, managers and execs. 
distribution, just one, lonely distribution, okay. Um, and and that note, I was talking about artists, um, and I've always been curious about this. Do you guys think it is a good idea for an artist to have a nine to five in the beginning of their career? Yes, 100. All right, um, don't quit your job until, <laughs> don't quit, don't, don't um, delete a source of income until you're able to replace that source of income, right? Um, we, I want, I want artists to get rid of the idea of, I don't want people seeing me as Zara ringing them up. Like, it's okay, you are a person, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's cool. When I got started, and I, I use Zara specifically because I worked at Zara while I was being an artist, and that was something that was in my head, like, hey, people are seeing me on the internet every day, but they also see me at work, and I'm kind of embarrassed by it. In retrospect, I shouldn't have been because I'm, I'm still getting the funds to fund my career too, right? So if you're making $30,000 a year or $40,000 a year, don't quit until you're able to replace that and then go full-fledged into it. There's nothing wrong with having that nine to five. And I say that for people who had that thought in their head in case, you know, they were wondering, should I quit now? Right, did you get free Zara? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, <laughs> I, I shouldn't have. Well, oh, I was saying, <laughs> I was saying, is it, was it the legal free or the five-finger disc? Next question. Okay. You have no, 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 because we, we still want to talk about this. I just, yeah, I just want to add a, a very important point to what he said. Um, you know, you take the most successful artists at the top of the game, Rihanna, Beyonce, whoever you want to throw out there, none of them are relying solely on music mm -hmm. income as their source of as Everything. their source of revenue, right? There are multiple business verticals there, so don't quit your day job or make the, your day job part of your business, you know? Do, do things that, that are gonna add value to what you're trying to build. Mm -hmm. um, it's all, it all connects, all of it connects. I, I wanna piggyback off of, I think both have really great points. I think, just to reiterate, do not quit your day job. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, even now, Piff, you said something about like, you know, until you can replace that money. You know, it's like you have that. I think, and I think we'll get into it in a little bit more of just like different avenues to, it's gonna be double the work. You might have your nine to five, but you might have to deliver a brand partnership campaign from five to nine, mm -hmm. you know? And so, but then, you know, again, you're generating that more income to, to the point where maybe that can then eventually replace what you were making at your day job. And I will say this too, is I know a lot, of, I was talking about this last night, a lot of talented artists that failed because of what you were saying earlier, of being like, oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to have this job, or I'm gonna be embarrassed, or whatever it is. I know a lot of artists that they killed their careers before anyone else could. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it was because of ego and a ego. lot of well, things that we're talking about. unhealthy relationship with the yeah. ego, because the exactly. ego is good, yeah. but exactly. having an unhealthy one relationship with it yeah. killed your career. That's good a stuff. Lot of overthinking. That was real a spiritual. lot of overthinking. You said, <laughs> you said real a healthy <laughs> ego. That's real spiritual. I like that. But now let's go to you, Ashley, let's start with you. So how much money should an artist be looking to invest in their singles, the project, and career overall? Hmm. So here's the thing. You have this powerful little tool right here in your hand that can connect you to millions of people and can help you create a lot of, like, really great content. So I think even with like the artists that I work with, like we're not working with huge budgets, like for their artwork, for their, like we've shot great videos for $1,000, 1500 um, artwork for like 200. Like I think people think like, oh, everything has to be so expensive for me to roll out my content and my music. When on all actuality, it doesn't have to be that much. You can still get a lot of quality content. You can still make quality music in a reasonable budget. Um, like I say, if I just want to throw out a ballpark number, like for a single that you're putting out, like you want to think, what's the thing that's going to get me the most visibility? Obviously, you want to create a visual, so you want to put your dollars towards that. And then also, you want to make sure that you're getting awareness on socials. And a lot of time, people think, oh, I got to have money for ads and things of that nature. But I think you can, you can balance between seeding, like IG awareness campaigns and things like that. That really helps give you a lot of visibility and put you into places, paying like a certain amount of that until your music starts to grow more. Then you can start diving into ads to where you can get more placement. But you just have to think strategically of what do I need? A visual content that you can create on your phone or a friend that can help you with something in the meantime, like just to get the ball rolling. Oh, and I go to you, Manny, because you have a video on your wrist, so how much should an artist spend? 
on a single or uh, career? I mean, the cop out is to say everything she just <laughs> said. But no, um, no, I mean, I agree with you 100, you know, 100%. It's exactly that. I, I even go back to the old, you know, kind of biz, business uh, mindset of like the 80 20 rule, right? Of like, you know, you're investing in yourself, but 80% of the people that are following you are going to, you know, uh, I'm sorry, 20% are going to make the most of your money. So I say that where I think you, right now we live in a time where you can go direct to consumer, right? You can tell your own story, you can really manage your own narrative uh, all the way through. You have your audiences, you build it, you stay consistent. Um, and I'm, again, we can get back into like a brand, I'm, I'm coming from the brand side. So before SoundCloud, I was at Red Bull, Nike, you know, depending on how hard you're willing to work, there are, you know, dollars that you can, again, go out there, get, be a part of social campaigns and leverage other brands and other people's money to help you build your career as well. I'm glad you said that, because I actually want to go to Jamie about creative financing. What does that look like or give them an idea of what they can do outside of just going to get a traditional record deal? What does creative financing look like? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is part of why I say um, it's the best time to be an artist, because there have never been so many options available, and that's why educating yourself and knowing these options is key. Um, you know, what I do at Sound Royalties, and, and we were just having this conversation, my background, I was at CSAC for 19 years, almost 19 years, and I could have stayed there forever, right? I could have, that was a comfortable situation, dealing hand in hand with songwriters, I loved it, it was my passion, it still is. Um, but moving forward, it's really important to see sort of like all these new business models coming in into the fold and understanding them, right? So sound royalties came to me um, and I couldn't ignore that this was an option that was so viable and non-existent in the industry, but necessary. How does an artist access capital without having to give up their rights, without having to sign a deal? And so essentially what sound royalties is, um, you know, it's, it's essentially like a bank built for the music creator. And you essentially are taking your, your royalty income, your existing royalty income, whether it's on the publishing side or the master's side, and you're refinancing it. You're refinancing your royalties. So what we do is we look at your, we analyze your income streams, your royalty streams. Um, we project what we think that's gonna earn over the course of time, and we sort of put together, we tailor three options for the artist, um, and it's, it's leveraging your royalties. It's against your royalty income, but we don't take any ownership of anything, so the, the artist maintains 100% ownership of their work, of their IP. Um, we don't recoup it 100%, so what that means is your, re your recoupment is a, a fixed amount, like, for instance, like a car loan or something, a car payment, right? It's a, it's a set amount, you know what it is, and your royalties are reassigned to us. We take whatever you owe us, and whatever you earn above that, we pass it through to you. So your, your revenue stream isn't cut off. So it's just an artist-friendly model. It's a way to maintain liquidity, which is probably the biggest challenge for most artists. You know, how do you, how do you keep the liquidity, right? Because the, the crazy thing about our industry is, is the financing is insane. Like the, the way the income streams flow is so erratic. You know, you could earn a million dollars in a quarter and then see nothing for five years, right? So this is why you can't go to a bank or you can't go to, you know, it, 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 they look at your, your finances and they're like, what is this? <laughs> this is a mess. So there are a lot of options now. Um, you just have to be aware of them. You have to educate yourself and, and, you know, deals are great too. You just have to know that everything is negotiable, understand your rights, understand ownership, um, you know, talk to everybody, talk to, talk to other people that are assigned to whatever label or publisher you're thinking of, of doing a deal with. Um, these are, you know, this is, I saw, sorry, I totally no, went on a tangent. <laughs> no, 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 if you don't mind, I just, I, I like, come on guys. I just want to add one thing, one thing to that. I know we just became fast friends, so hopefully we don't become enemies after this one. Um, <laughs> but no, there, I just want to say there's options out there, right? So at SoundCloud, we launched Fan Powered Royalties last year. And so, you know, again, we're, we're trying to scale that up, but ideally it's like tying, you know, artist payments to their fandom. 
And so what we're seeing is just a lot of the emerging artists, like that's where they're seeing, again, like they're activating, even though it might be a smaller audience, they are getting a bit more money and then that, you know, it's coming direct so they're able to reinvest it. So again, I'm just saying there are a lot of options out there. Find the one, research and find the one that's right for you. Um, you know, because there's even some people that have been having a great run with fa fan powered royalties and we're not saying, oh, you're exclusive to us. They're getting to the next level of their career. So they're going to make that next decision that it's going to advance their career. And it's like, cool, we're glad that we were a part of it. We were able to kind of have a new feature or a new, and, you know, something, a new tool for you to kind of get to that next level. And then, you know, that's probably when they start knocking on your door. Oh. And, and, and funding that has, that has nothing to do with a company. Um, there's artists in here. I'm sure y'all know 20 people that could give you $50 for something, right? Whether it's merch, whether it's a ticket to an event or something like that. 20 times 50 is what? I don't know. I'm Damn, guys. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, please. please tell it's a thousand dollars, right? Okay. We're, we're all in music now, for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we do music. I don't, right? I don't work but. in the finance side of things. <laughs> <laughs> I just work with the creators. I can tell y'all where to put the music. I don't know. I'm not but yeah, like nothing. there's 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 so many different creative <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's so many creative ways to get to get um funding from your fans, from the people that know who you are and actually support you. Some of my favorite examples is well, I'm one of my favorite examples, but La Russell is one of my favorite examples too. Right? La Russell's made, um his whole movement is if you don't know who La Russell is, check him out. His whole movement is fan powered, right? The people that support him donate donate to him, they either get his merch or they come to a show, and he has a model where it's like, pay what you want. And yeah, you think if people are paying what they want, they're just gonna give me a dollar, right? Some people are just gonna give you a dollar, right? But then there's gonna people that's gonna give you a band. There's people that's gonna give you 10 bands, four bands, just because they let mess with your movement. So it's very important, and I might jump in ahead, to, to build a community so that- <laughs> That's why I don't send the questions out. <laughs> but it is important to like have that, that, that know that, you know, you're an artist, so you want to have people that support you. So if you, I'm sure you know 20 people that can give you at least $50. Well, since you want to go there, <laughs> Ashley, how, how important is an artist community? Oh, I think I, it's so important. That's one thing I stress to the artists that I work with on a daily. Like, working with other artists who are in your same lane, I think a lot of times, like, artists are quick to look at the bigger artists to, like, want to work with and feature and collab, when I think it should be quite the opposite. Like, look to your left, look to your right. The people that are right next to you are the ones that's going to grow with you. So build within that community. Build within those producers, those songwriters, so that you guys can find, like, that match, that pair. And as you grow, they grow with you and support you along the way. Because I think the biggest thing sometimes, too, when artists go out and get these big features, most of the time, to be quite real, they're doing for a check. They're probably not going to do a repost. They're probably not going to support your song or send a link. And it's like, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, this, this is going to help me. But it's like, in all actuality, it's, it's not. It's just, it's a cool look. Don't get me wrong. But you want something strategically that's going to help you build. So work with that person that's next to you and build within your community fan base and start to build and speak to your followers. That's the really, really important thing. The community that you do have, respond to their comments. Like, go on live, chat with your fans. I don't care if it's five people that's on your live. You're talking to somebody. And one out of them five is going to tell somebody mm -hmm. about you and your music, and that's how it's going to grow. You have to be engaging. It's so important, and stay consistent with it. And I want to go to you, Manny, because I think SoundCloud yeah, no, is an amazing community. And that's what I was going to say. Lean in. I mean, there's a lot of platforms out there, but uh, lean into <laughs> platform called SoundCloud. No, um, and I say that because our mantra is community is currency. And so a lot of the things that we're working on right now that you'll see over the next six, eight, 12 months are really that. Again, putting the tools and the resources into the artist's hands to build that community. So like one example would be um, right now on the platform, you know, we're still rolling it out, but like fans can message our top 50 fans both you know internationally or in the country we literally activated this not that she needed our help but it was i think a good case study um but we had baby tate uh in our office doing an intimate show on wednesday thursday and um and we literally just had her or her team message the top 50 fans in new york city and it became you know this this experience that was like one-to-one -one. her album's called manny petty we did a bunch of manicure pedicure stations and it was just a different way for us to, you know, kind of open up an opportunity. But again, for us, it's like 
yeah, that's your that's your community. We're just here to kind of amplify it where we can, but we want to make sure that you know we're doing this at a little bit of a larger scale. But any artist in here should be able to do the same thing, you know. And if that's just a a meetup, a happy hour, you know what I mean? Selling, you know, come link up, fifteen bucks a head. Yeah. Not doing no math, man. But <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but I say that I'm yeah. sweating. I'll take out so a calculator. For the next one. Keep talking about these numbers. <laughs> so I'm gonna come back to you. Mm -hmm. When is it a good time to consider being either indie or a major? Like, when do you think you make that decision? It's honestly dependent on what you what you want. It, it's there's, it's now become an option to be major as opposed to a necessity to be major because there's so many um, lucrative streams of revenues that you can get that without knowing anybody at a record label, right? So that one of the examples I mentioned was having a community just donate to you or or, or support you. Or if say you get minimum 10,000 followers, you're eligible for like lucrative brand partnerships from a thousand to five thousand, five thousand dollars just because you have 10,000 supportive uh, an audience that a brand wants to tap into because you have them too. So you can just get money off of off of that, or just from streams, on um, playlisting, and you can do in in on the non-major side. What all a major labor is is well, to describe what a major label is, it's uh, Universal, Sony, or, or Warner, right? You can, you can instead do a distribution deal, right? Or, cause, or where you say you give up, I don't know, 20% equity of your streaming re revenue, and they help you with uh, digital marketing services or just connecting you with, with uh, so-and-so here at Sprite or so-and-so here at Coca-Cola. Don't know why I'm using soda companies. It's just in my head. Or... Um, yeah, there's just so many different channels where you just, but to answer your question, it, it's really up to you. It's just, it's very, very optional. Yeah, I was about to ask you, because aren't you yeah. like technically indie major? I or? am at an indie. I okay. came from Def Jam, which is a major underneath Universal, and I now work at APG, which stands for Artist Partner okay. Group, and it's an indie label, and our biggest thing is we want to be partners with the artists. Gotcha. Like, it's a 50-50. You give, we give. Like, we're here to help provide services within marketing, digital marketing, sync, licensing. We also have a publishing mm -hmm. division as well, too, for, like, songwriters and producers. But we're very, we're very artists, pro-artists, artist empowerment. Like, we don't want to change anything that you're already doing. We just want to help amplify. And I think sometimes at majors, where it can be a little difficult is, they have a string of artists on a roster, sometimes like up to 50. And they have a lot of big departments that are great as well, like you know, radio, TV, press, all of that, which is still great and is still needed. But I think once you get to a certain point in your career where you really have some momentum, the ball is running, like it's something that you wanna do. Or if it's like, I actually like what I'm doing, I wanna keep doing it, but I could use a little help here, then you can look at an indie or a distribution company to like help service your music. Mm -hmm. But it really is up to you. There's so many options out there, but I definitely think you should go somewhere that really supports you, that's able to be hands-on with you, because the other thing about where I work is, we have a small roster, but we're able to really focus in on our artists. like giving them TikTok That's ideas, huge. like um, helping with running ads, digital marketing, video, all of that. Like you want somebody that's really, that's not gonna wanna change you or try to change you, but really just help steer you and help give you good strategy when you're releasing your music. Dope, now this is for everybody. I wanna talk about this. Should there be an artist union? There are some people out here that we see good artists. They don't have dental, they don't have healthcare. Should there be an artist union? What do you think? And who's going to spearhead that? I think this is a, the answer would be nuanced because artists aren't employees, right? So it's difficult to create a union within an organization. So can you elaborate on that? Because this is artistpreneurship. Yeah, yeah. As an artist, entrepreneur, you're technically an employee of your company. No? So you can create that for yourself, but when, when you describe a union, you're talking about something that's with a number of artists together, yeah. right? Yeah. But artists are business owners, so it will be difficult to create. When you think of union, you think of like, uh, I don't know, 10, nine, what is it? SAG. Appreciate you. Like yeah, <laughs> like, that, like that. But I think, I think SAG is a good example of how that can be. Right, that's what I'm saying. Something SAG for is artists. for film, but we don't have that on the music side. 
I'm going I'm to let well, somebody else answer that. Yeah. Did y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's good. I think it would be helpful to do that because a lot of artists, some of them don't work nine to fives or really have that source of income when they're starting to do things. And having those resources like dental, health care, you know, proper mental care, because like that's a huge thing as well, too, because you're dealing with a lot. And to have someone to be able to help you through those things is really important. Only thing it's like, we all know there's a million and one artists out there. So trying to like figure out the logistics of how that could work would probably be a bit of a task. But I do think it would be helpful to have the artist union. Has that been attempted? I don't know. I don't I think there, there are a few individual um, organizations that sort of do various things in the space. Like, you know, there's a, an amazing org organization called Backline that's all about mental health and wellness um, for touring musicians. So there, it's sort of piecemeal, but there isn't one organization. There's, you know, Music Cares. There's, there are things like that. Um, and then there's a lot of advocacy that happens in the community. Like. A, um, I, you know, I'm, I'm part of the Recording Academy. I'm, a, I'm on the board of governors in New York and a lot of advocacy work, you know, pass, the passing, lobbying in, in, uh, you know, in Washington to get bills passed that are pro-songwriter, pro-artist, you know, that are going to help sort of elevate how um, you're paid, how, you know, the, the types of bills that are passed are only going to happen if we move as a community. Mm. So it, yeah, it's really about community building, assembling and, and moving as one, you know? Okay. I didn't know if you want to answer, but I got the little notice. We only have three questions we can okay. ask. <laughs> three questions. Who has the golden ticket for the three questions? <laughs> Question number one, yes. Stand up, state your name, your zodiac sign, and <laughs> what else you would like to talk about? Honored to take the first um, question. Yeah. I'm Juwan and I am Your a sign. Gemini. Gemini, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I, I work at a major record label. You work at a major? Yeah, Are so you allowed we... to say? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Sony. Okay, yeah. Sony. Yeah. Um, yeah, my question is for Jamie. So I'm so glad that you guys touched up on finance because I'm a math person. Um, and I so why did you <laughs> answer the question? <laughs> no, um, yeah, I, I, I'm interested in that sound royalty, like how the business model works for that, because I think it assumes that the artist has a solid streaming income. And how is that looking like the followership, like ballpark? Because I feel like if you just started out, you probably won't have that much streaming um, income happening. So, like ballpark, um, who's your like artist audience in terms of like followership? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, when we talk about streams, it's a little bit confusing. I shouldn't use the word streams. Um, we're talking about royalty revenue income, right? So, uh, it could be your publishing income. It could be your masters. Your, you know, from distribution. It could be all. All of these are income streams, um, not literal streaming income, um, just want to clarify that. But um, the, we can work with artists who, the baseline is uh, $5,000 annually. So if you're earning at least $5,000 annually from some type of revenue, uh, royalty revenue, whether it's, you know, it could be distribution, it could be um, merch, it could be, uh, you, you know, you might be going on tour and you have a guarantee, we can advance against that. So there are a lot of options just depending on where you're at, but yeah, $5,000 annually is the minimum that we can work with. And then, you know, onwards and upwards. So, and it's really just about, um, like I said, it, every deal is, is really bespoke because the crazy thing about our industry, and I'm gonna share this with you guys, you'll have all my info um, at the end of this, but we have this document we put together called the 50 revenue streams every creative should know about because in our industry, there are literally over 50 possible revenue streams. Um, just to, yeah. Thank you. Yes, golden ticket number two. Okay, hi. Yeah, hi. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay, hi, I'm Laura. Um, it's how we're going to treat you. Are you a hostile witness or are you a. No, no, I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay. I'm a Taurus. Oh, okay, we like hi. Taurus. Okay. Um, 
still talking about money, um, I have a question, I guess more directed at Ashley, just because you were talking about, um, you know, making a music video for a thousand dollars, you know, a couple hundred bucks for artwork. Where are artists, where's the return on that investment coming from? That's the thing. It's like, it's more of a toss up because you really don't know what your ROI is going to be from it. That's why it's like, when you're making those things, like you have to be really intentional with it, with your spins, what you're doing. Like you have to think more long term than short term. Like, oh, let me just throw this little music video up here and like keep it pushing. Like, create the best work that you can within your means. Like, there's so much that you can do to create quality work that'll resonate with people, that'll feel genuine to people and like very natural. Cause you always want to think of when you're creating on a human level, like how are people gonna connect and bond with this? Because that's what's really gonna help. I mean, you don't know, you could put out a video, it could get five views, or you could put out a video and it goes viral and you get 20 million views. It's really more so of a toss up. You just have to have the faith like, okay, I'm doing this with intention. I'm gonna see some return on investment eventually, maybe not right now, but you have to just be patient and be consistent with it. That's really, I hope that's the best answer, yeah. And also, if you want to get like a little bit more bang for your buck with that thousand dollars for the video, it doesn't have to be a one music video. You can say, hey, let me hire you for the day and we just shoot 20 pieces of content. We do 10 of my songs, two videos for each one, and I'll post it on TikTok or I'll post it on Instagram. And you have like, like a month worth of content for a band. That can be another way that you do it too. That's, and, that's a real yeah. artist answer right there. Yeah, that's I was just stuff. That was one thing um, that I was going to say just to add to that before Drew punches me. Uh, Man, I was going to say, yeah, he's cutting us off. We got one No, but it's like, bro. you know, I think what's, what's beautiful, at least for what I'm saying for the past few years, is people embracing lo-fi. You know, like yeah, I, yeah. I came up, shiny suits, million dollar budget videos, all that shit. I love what, you know, I'm not even saying younger people. I just love what the creative community is doing and embracing other ways of storytelling. You know, I'm seeing, you know. Camcorders I haven't seen since I was like 12 years old. <laughs> Camcorders are um, standard. No, <laughs> but I just say, embrace it, you know, and I think that's where get creative. Like that, that batching is genius. For sure. One more question. Who has got golden ticket number three? Robert Leo, and I wanted to ask something about indies versus majors. Do you think, all right, this is, a long-winded question, but I'll try and make it short. Do you think once someone goes from indie and crosses over to major, you think there's more hands in the pot and their sound changes? And mm, I'd say yes and no. Um, I think it's really important when an artist is looking to cross over to the major label system that they actually meet the team that's going to be working day to day on their project. I think sometimes with a lot of artists, they sign to a major, they get really excited, you know, they meet a few people, they sell them a wonderful dream, like, oh, yes, this is it. But then once they get into the thick of it, half the times they don't even really know who's on their team and who's doing what or who to talk to about what. Like, I think that's a, where I'm at, which is an indie, like whenever a rs are looking to sign someone, they always bring them into marketing first, like give us a background on them, like why they wanna sign, and then we actually get to sit and talk to the artist, their management, whoever is representing them, to really like kind of pick their brain and get an understanding of like what we are here to do, like to be very transparent with them. And sometimes with the major, there's so many different departments that all do a lot of great work, but they don't really, they're not really able to connect with an artist on a more personal level because it's like you're pushing through so much volume. So when you are looking to cross over into that major because you want some of those bigger benefits, like meet your day-to-day -day team. Like who is gonna be my project manager? Who's gonna be press? Who's gonna be working on sync? All of that. So you're able to put a face with a name and also employees like that too because they want to feel like connected to the work that they're doing with the artist. They want to be able to know them on a more personal level and not just feeling like, oh, I'm, let me just do this, do this, and get it out. So um, I hope that kind of answers your question. Yes, thank you. Okay. Perfect. And before we leave, I want everybody to get their socials so everybody can follow them. Yeah, but mine's super easy, at Manny Toro, M-A-N-N-Y-T-O-R-O. Mine's at Miss Jamie D, M-I-S-S, J-A-M-I-E, D with three E's at the end. 
Ashley. Um, mine is super simple. It's just AEM underscore. My A-E-M initials. AEM underscore? Just my initials. All right, Brandon. <laughs> Um, and mine is uh, P-I-F-F-M-A-R-T-I, P-I-F-F-M-A-R-T-I. Cool, and I'm Jason, J-A-S-O-N, Reddick, R-E-D-D-I-C-K, underscore. Give it up for Drew. This is the first panel, guys, of the DigiLog Day, the first panel panel. Like, give it up. This is amazing. You made history, guys. We're the first. <laughs> Oh, yes. sorry. Money yes. saving tip, by the way. Uh, you all guys, all you guys agree, image is important, right? For an artist, right? Yes. Um, don't spend money on your image, right? If you want to like be fly in your videos and things like that, go to Urban Outfitters, Zara, H and M, whatever. Wear it for the content. Return that shit right back, <laughs> and then keep doing it all over and over and over again. Save that bread, and that's my piece. I like that. Absolutely, or, absolutely. Or go work there and use five-figure discount, right? <laughs> I love it. Hold on, hold on. One last tip, one yes. last tip. Yes. You want to get on the mic oh, for it? I was yeah. just saying, also, like, with your wardrobe, like, have a signature piece, something that's identifiable to you so that when people see you, they associate you with that. Like, oh, you have a cool hoodie that says, like, maybe it's a lyric from your song or something like that. Wear that everywhere until you drive it in the ground because people are gonna associate that brand with your name. So that's another tip too. Absolutely. Thanks. Let's give it up for the artist, entrepreneurship panel and moderator, Jason Reddick.